Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We thank and praise the Lord for another day, just another opportunity to come before him, and we've got a good lesson tonight. He says, the Sonia on the line, we're going to ask her, will she open us up with prayer? Sister Sonia, would you pray for us tonight? Actually, I think it's about the team. There she is. You talking to me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I can hardly hear y'all. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a little. Okay, I'll pray. You ready? First of all, for this evening of this fellowship of Sunday school, letting all of us come together for the knowledge of your word. Lord, we thank you, we love you. We pray that the safety of all the saints that are out on the road tonight, cover yeah. them in your name, Jesus, our bishop and first lady and family. We ask that you cover them. We love you and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And you know, this class is interactive, so we'll be jumping in where you can fit in. <laughs> Our lesson tonight is coming out of the book of Job, which is a really good book. I didn't think I was going to like this lesson. When I was reading it, I was like, hmm, this is going to be boring. <laughs> but after I really got into it, um, it was really interesting because we do a lot of what happened in this section of Job. You know, everybody knows the story of Job. Um, but we're coming out of the eighth chapter of Job. And in our Sunday school lesson says, by the end of this lesson, we'll understand Bildad's response to Job's suffering. Discern carefully when others misinterpret God's ways and grow closer to God and live faithfully in God's just ways. And it says, keep in mind, then answered Bildad, the Shuhites, Shuhite, and said, how long will thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? So, you know, we all know, like I said, the story of Job. And when you go to Job 1 and 1, let's turn there if you have your Bibles real quick. And we'll just read first couple of the first verse. Um, it started out, it says, there was a man in the land of Uz who was blameless and upright. So I want you to look at those two words, blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And so Job was an upright man. He was a man. He wasn't just half-stepping. He wasn't out there sinning. He was an upright and just man. And then, you know, we know how the story goes on and says, um, he was wealthy. He had, uh, says, uh, and seven sons and three daughters were born unto him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that the man was the greatest of all the people of the East. So this man wasn't playing. He had a lot of substance. He had God's favor. He was a righteous, upright man. And his sons would go to feast in their houses each on the appointed day and would send and invite their three sisters and eat and drink with them. And so it was when those days of feasting had run their course, course that Job would send and sanctify them. He would rise early in the morning and off burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did this regularly. So he was a praying man. He was an upright, just praying man. But we all know how the story goes. Then, um, you know, how through the, um, he ended up having some suffering. And a lot of people don't like to suffer. I know, you know. I always tell the Lord, you know, I take your word for it. You ain't got to put me through some things. You ain't got to make me sick to know that you are a healer. I take your word, you know, but a lot of people think that suffering is tied with sinning, that you must have done something. So, you know, we know the story goes on and how he loses everything. He lost his children. He lost his, uh, his substance and he eventually uh, started to lose his health. And all things came upon him. And, you know, when you're going through situations and you're, you're, you're living right, 
and you're thinking, God, why? Why am I going through? I'm doing everything I can. I'm, I'm praising you. I'm serving you. I'm doing everything right. Why am I going through all these things? And, you know, one thing that uh, uh, Joe did, he said, the thing I feared the most, you know, there were some things that, you know, he felt like he was doing, he's going to do the best to serve the Lord. But, but uh, uh, he had some fear that if he didn't serve the Lord, that, you know, things would not be, he would not be as prosperous, I guess you could say, or as have the God, favor of God as he had on his life. So as we all know, he was going through some things and, you know, when you're going through a situation, what happens? Your friend, <laughs> your friend said, oh, you must have did something. You've been living this good life and all of a sudden stuff started happening to you. He lost his children. His money got funny. So the first thing that comes to the mind of people is you must have did something. <laughs> you must have messed up somewhere. And, and, and that's the subject of our lesson. Bildad misunderstands God's justice. Um, then all your friends come out of the woodwork and say, oh, you know, you must have did something wrong. You must have uh, uh, sinned or something happened. And so he had these friends or so-called friends that uh, came to him to try to get him to uh, more or less repent. Repent and go back to God because you must have did something wrong. And they were giving him advice of what might have happened to cause his calamities. And that's where we are in this lesson. So if you have your uh, Sunday school lesson, it says in Job 8, 1, somebody want to read 1 and 2 for me? 8, 1 and 2. Anybody? I'll read it. Okay. Job 8 and 1. Then answer Bedadad, the Shumanite, and said, how long would thou speak these things? And how long should thy words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? See, Job was calling out to the Lord and, and asking the Lord, you know, praying and, and you know, uh, you know, seeking the Lord. What, what, you know, what's, what, what have I done? What, what's going on? And, he, and his friends, his first friend, what was his name? Zephaliah. It begins with a Z. He gave his little two cents about what caused this problem. Now it's Bildad, his other friend, that came along. And he said, you know, Morlis came to Job and said, why are you doing all this? Why are you crying out to the Lord? You know what, Morlis, you know what you did. <laughs> and, and then verse number uh, says, Verse number three says, does God pervert judgment or does the almighty pervert justice? In okay. other words, has God changed? You know, God is a God, but he had the right theology, but he was applying it wrongly to Job's life. The theology is, yes, God is a just God. He will punish those uh, that um, do things unjustly. Um, so that theology is right. And because if he's trying to say, uh, does the almighty pervert justice? Is he, is he not uh, doing what he said he would do? Or is God wrong for judging? And no, God is not wrong when he judges people, in other words. He's not wrong if you do meet judgment. So then if God isn't wrong in his judgment, because his friends seen Job as an upright man, then, then it had to be Job. Job had to have done something because God isn't wrong in judging. And if all these calamities are coming upon you, then you must have did something wrong. And so he says in verse four, uh, if I, uh, so he was saying that, um, that Job, Job should stop acting like he's so righteous and he's so, oh, so perfect and just come on out with it. Tell what you did. Give it up. You know, you know you did something. And, and that's what times, a lot of times when we see people going through situations, we think they must have messed up. They must have did something wrong because God is a God. He's going to judge you. And he does say that in his word that, that, that talks about uh, people will get their just reward. Um, and, and, you know, 
for, for sin. You're gonna, but us as humans, we cannot assume anything. And this is what this lesson is all about, tell you the truth, about assumptions and, and assuming the wrong thing. Uh, sometimes we step into place and try to be as God and judge wrongly at, at situations. But we're not God. We're not all knowing. But God is right to judge. But we as us, we cannot judge. And that's what this is all about. They were assuming it's an assumption. And there's seven assumptions in this lesson that we're going to talk about that Bill Dad did. He was, there were seven assumptions. Um, the first assumption, he assumes God is judging Job. He, that was his first assumption. He was, that's why he said, you're acting like you're so righteous, you're being a hypocrite and accusing him of major sins. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, he may have sin, but we don't know. Uh, and we are not to step in the place of God and judge. Right. The second assumption in verse number four, it says, now, if thy children sinned against him, and have cast them away for their trans transgression. You know, this, this is a hurting thing right there. He lost his 10 children. Now, you know, if we lost our child, we would be hurting. And these are your friends coming to you. You said, you must have did something wrong for your child to have died. Either they sinned or you sinned. If your child... Uh, you know, left this earth, God getting them. They had to do some kind of transgression. Instead of having compassion, instead of having love towards Job during this time, his friends were saying, they must have did something. Oh, they, they got that, that, that uh, illness because they did something. They died <laughs> because they did something. And that's a hurting thing. Well, since you just lost your child, and you're saying that they were in sin, that's why they died. And then, then they switched it, Bill Dad switched it. He said, if thou would have seeked unto God be times. Now that word be times means early in the morning. If you had a got up and prayed for your children and got up and laid hands on them and sanctified them, then none of this would have happened. So either your children sinned or you sinned or you didn't pray for them. And uh, as it says, and make supplication to the Almighty on their behalf. Supplication means praying for them. And so Bill Dad was up here accusing Job. Could you imagine? You just lost your children, and you said you didn't get up and pray. You didn't pray for your child. <laughs> That's why they died. That you didn't. You didn't. You didn't uh, sanctify them. That's why they got in a car accident. Because God's judging them. Or he's judging you for some sins you did. So it's coming through your children. That's the way Bill Dad was doing. But God had to correct that. Because when you look in the lesson, let's turn to Job chapter 1 and 1. What did we just read? Job 1 and 1. Someone will read, read that for me in your Bible. Oh, wait a minute. Not 1 and 1. Uh, read uh, 4 and 5. Four and five. Uh -huh. Chapter one, four and five. Somebody want to read that for me. Oh, one, four and five. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So he did that. <laughs> but he's saying, they died because you didn't lay hands on them that morning. They got killed because you didn't pray for them. They died because you didn't sanctify them. But the Lord showed it right here. Job did this regularly. He got up early. That B, B times means early in the morning and laid and prayed for his just in case if they sin. 
and, and just in case. So we know that we, as saints of God, we got to pray for our children. We got to lay hands on, even those that ain't saved, you know, that may need be out of the will of the Lord. You still have to pray for them. Get up early in the morning, lay hands on them before they go to school because these schools got all kinds of things going on. There's a lot of children committing suicide out there. My granddaughter was just telling me to uh, one young lady, they had to call and we really got to really pray for our young people. I don't know what's going on. It wasn't just one, it was two girls that she had to stop them. They called, one had to call the ambulance on because they had took some pills. They just wanted to leave this earth. And my daughter went to the house and the girl was throwing up and their mom was come home wondering why this person's in their house because we're save, trying to save your child's life because they're going through stuff. Our young people are going through things. And she just happened to call Soraya and Soraya called her mama and they went on and you know, got the ambulance over there in time. So we really, really have to be you know, mindful of our young people. They're going through some situations and we don't even know it. They're with this COVID stuff, they're isolated. They're not able to do the things that they do. They're, they're dying, but, but that's why we have to pray. And if you don't have children, pray for somebody else's children. If your children are grown, pray for somebody else's kid. Pray for that single mom that, that, that's struggling to raise her kids. You never know what they're going through. So Job did this on a regular basis and sanctified. So it wasn't that uh, they weren't covered. He said, I did it just in case, <laughs> uh, you know, that if they happen to fall and sin, I'm covering them. So we got to cover our children. So that was a, a erroneous uh, accusation that Bildad did. And, and that's what a lot of times, uh, People that mean well, and they think they're speaking to you in love, but they're not because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're going through. So we got to pray for one another. But, but, but instead of consoling him, he's accusing him <laughs> and assume that he didn't. And that assumed that his children were lost, but you don't know. So we are not all knowing like God. Only God knows. Only God can do the right just all we do is assume and what's that word assume mean anybody what what does it mean to assume something assume we do it all the time i can't hear you dr crook not knowing not knowing the full details making mm -hmm. an assumption <laughs> well mm -hmm. thinking you know and don't know mm -hmm. having part of the information mm -hmm. Maybe just what you see, but you don't know the whole story. You don't know both sides of the story. You're just assuming you know the whole thing. You're just assuming that they're in sin. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, who is that to talk? But you said an giving an opinion. Yeah, an opinion. Your opinion may not be right. It's just like sometimes people uh, be driving a car, single female with a male, just assuming. So I'm going on. That person might have been broke down down the street with the tire. They're taking them to the gas station. Just assuming. But you don't know the whole story. But boy, did you see sister so-and-so? <laughs> <laughs> they was with brother so-and-so in the car. You know they ain't up to no good. He probably don't even know brother so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> but making an assumption. So Can I add something up with that too? Mm -hmm. You're saying that making assumptions, thinking something that brings me back to the scripture, paraphrasing, to the unclean, everything looks unclean. Um, so sometimes we make assumptions of judgment, but really we make an assumption and judgment based on where we are in the mm -hmm. Lord at that particular time, which may not necessarily be in the right place either. Yeah, so it's making uh, assumptions without all the information knowing uh, and not getting the full picture. Mm -hmm. Even when there's discussions and it, it may be some partial truth, mm -hmm. but you still don't know the whole truth. Right. So don't assume you know just by your past experience, what you think you know, but let God do the judging. Let God do the, uh, the, the assuming, I guess you could say. <laughs> Because he's all-knowing. He knows everything, and we don't. 
And so verse number uh, six, it says, if you were pure and upright, surely now he would await for thee and make the habitations of thy righteousness prosper. Now, if you were pure, if you were so righteous, he would make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. In other words, if you were upright, what does upright mean, anybody? Upright. Man, truthful. Mm -hmm. Upright, honorable, honorable, honest. Honorable. If you were perfect, if you were upright, pure, God would make you prosperous. If you were all who you say you, if you were all that baggage, God would have you uh, rich and prosperous. And see, that's what a lot of those prosperity preachers preach. Uh, you do this five hundred dollars, God's gonna bless you. Uh, not necessarily. And that, that, that prosperity preaching, if you're in the right place with the Lord, God's going to pour out blessings and going to open up the windows and, and pour out the blessings. Well, you know, he may do that, but, but, uh, but that's not why he's doing it mm -hmm. just because you're doing right. He's doing it because he loves us and, 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 and he will throw in some extra things because we're living right. But that's not why you're living right just to get the blessing or get the favor of God. That's why I don't you, you don't want to uh, sometimes we uh, have those situations where they say, if you give this ten thousand dollars, God's going to give bless you. But if you give it because you love God and I want to want to show my love to God, not because I'm looking for something in return. Um, because it's not about you giving it, it's out of the heart. It's just if you love somebody, you're going to do what you do. You're going to give from your heart. You're going to give everything. You know, when we were in the world and, you know, you really love somebody, you, you, you didn't mind spending money on that person because you love them. Um, and that's the way with God. When you, when you love God, sustain them, you're going to give him whatever he asks for, but not because I'm looking or the blessings or the favor back that I'm doing this. So we have to keep our motives and our, uh, our right. But he said that um, you must not have been pure. Bill that was accusing Job of not being upright and honest. And so let's look at back to uh, Job one and one again. What did he say right there in, in the verse first, for the first verse? It says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and he was what? Upright. And one who feared God and shunned evil. And then uh, the other scripture is uh, one and eight. It says, then the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless, an upright man who fears God and shuns evil. So Bill Dad was lying again. Because Job was all of that. His, 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 I said his theology was right, but his application of that theology was wrong because he was applying that uh, because Job uh, was going through this that he must not be what God said he is. And so that was an assumption. And that was uh, not a right thinking, as you could say. Then just Laura, can I ask a question? Uh -huh. um, in this uh, King James Version, it uses the word perfect and uh, the translation for perfect, if I'm asking you, I'm asking a question. Mm -hmm. Is the translation of perfect meaning also spiritually mature? Uh, that is the word perfect. And, and when we get to uh, the seventh one, we can go ahead and deal with it now. Perfect isn't meaning 
that um, it's, it's more meaning balanced, mature, whole, complete, because none of us are perfect. We were born in sin. <laughs> we, the only thing that's perfect out there is Jesus. And 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 because you know when he looked on the earth for a perfect man, there was none. <laughs> so he had to get into flesh. God had to wrap himself up in flesh and be born of a woman and became the son of God. That's the only perfect one. But when he's talking about this perfect, it means he's balanced, he's mature, he's whole, he's complete. And upright meant that he was honest. And he was uh, uh, honest and honorable. So he had a good reputation. So that theology or that thinking was wrong. In other words, that Bill Dad had. Bill, yeah, Bill Dad had. And then first number, the next verse. Um, and it says, though the beginning was small, Yet thy latter end should be greatly increased. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon the earth are shadows. He's saying more or less, um, in the beginning you were doing well. You may have started off well, but you ain't gonna end well, you know, because of your sin, because you you messed up. And 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 you might have started off good, but at the end, you ain't gonna end well because of your sin. If you don't repent, get that stuff straight, your end ain't gonna be right. Well, part of that may be right, but it's God to make that decision. But at the end of this story, y'all know, he got back more than what he had in the beginning. <laughs> so that was a, a messed up theology that Bill Dad had. He knew that his uh, end was better than his beginning because sometimes suffering ain't based off of sin. Sometimes suffering is based off God is letting you know where you are and he's bragging on you because you are living a good life. You are doing, and, and, and see, who's the accuser of the brethren? Later. He was accusing God you only serving, they're only serving you because you blessing them. They only got faith, you only, take that hedge out from around them. Let's <laughs> see what they do. They'll curse you and, 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 and spit on you. Take that hedge out from around about them. But see, God's bragging on some of us. Some of us are really going through a situation, but God knows if he brought you to it, he's able to take you through it. It's only a test. Sometimes the test isn't for God, the test is for you to help you go to the next level in your life because there's new levels, new devils. <laughs> and the higher you go, you're going to encounter some more trials and tribulations. But God knows he got you. He knows he wouldn't take you through those situations unless he knew you could handle it. A lot of us are dealing with a whole lot right now, dealing with a lot of things in our lives. But he said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And when you talk about spots, spots are those big sins. I see those sins. Like, uh, uh, you know, like a, a bride, when they come down the aisle, they had a big black spot on them. That's a, something that's noticeable. Everybody knows that's sin. Yeah, that, that's sin. But he said, I'm coming back for a spot or wrinkle. Now, a lot of saints may not have the big spots, but they got a whole lot of wrinkles. How do you get out wrinkles? Press. 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 <laughs> Gotta put some heat on it. I'll be ironing my clothes and they'd be all wrinkled up when I get them out of the dryer. Only way you gotta do is you gotta put that starch on them, press down and put some heat on it. And sometimes that's what's going on with us. God is pressing us and he's putting that heat on us to get those wrinkles out. Those things that we think is okay. I was asking, asking the Lord, I'm just going to tell it like it is. You know, I know I got some issues. Everybody got issues, but I got some issues, especially on my job. <laughs> and because of stress, we're going through so much pressure on your job. And sometimes I was, I was telling somebody, I said, I don't even like myself because I'm getting so out of character because of the stress and the pressure. But God, and, I, and, and Bishop preached Sunday. 
He said, don't leave your job. I don't know if y'all are eight o'clock. He said, don't. I said, he up here talking to me. to me. He said, don't leave your job. Cause I, I was ready to quit. I'm ready to walk out. He said, don't leave your job. I said, Lord, but you know, I'm sitting there praying. You know what they're doing. You know what they're saying. He said, it ain't about them. It's about you. I'm trying to get you in the right place. I'm trying to fix your attitude. <laughs> I'm trying to fix them, them things that you can't handle. Cause when you're under a lot of pressure, those things that are in you gonna come out. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real. It's gonna come out. It's gonna come out one way. It's gonna come out of you physically where you start getting sick or it's gonna come out in things you say and how you say them. And so those things God's trying to fix in me. He said, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You gotta fix that even under pressure. And the only way I can do is I gotta press it, press it out of you. So the more you, you have to go through it. So you gotta change that tone a little bit. You gotta change them words a little bit. And that's with all of us. There's situations that God's got in you you have to look and say, God, why are you allowing this to happen? Because he's trying to get us some wrinkles out because he's coming back soon. Y'all don't see the signs. <laughs> we, you know, I was looking at the war getting ready to start it. That was prophesied in the Old Testament. Y'all ain't watching the time. That was prophesied in Revelations that this war, this is going to be a one day war. It's on our doorstep. Y'all don't see that the times is coming. We're approaching the end times. This is prophesied in Revelations. I was watching a series called The Sign of the Times before this even happened. I said, that's happening right now. Putin coming over, you know, starting, it's going to be a one day war. It's talked about it in Revelation. So we got to get ready. God's putting on the heat on us. That's why we're going through so much. Some of us going through divorces, going through situations in our homes, going through yes. m- money getting funny. Uh, all these things are pressuring us stressing us but he's trying to get us ready mm-hmm. for him coming back so said the end will be better than the beginning and at the end of this whole thing all that job suffered he got back double for his trouble and so verse number 10 it says shall not thy teach thee and tell thee in other words out of their heart Behold, God would not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. And they were talking about, you know, uh, if you were doing good, God wouldn't reject you, wouldn't cast away somebody who was in the right place with him. Um, You know, because you know what was happening, people were talking about him. What did Job do? You know, he was was the man, he was the preacher, and Bildad was a preacher. You would think a preacher would be there to console and and sympathize with you and and encourage you and and lift you up. But he was saying, you must have sinned. You must have messed up. Get it right. Well, yeah, the word is says, you know, if you sin, we we do have to repent. But Bill Dad wasn't in the position of God to judge that he was in sin because there's other reason why saints can go through situations. It ain't always sin. God may be bragging on you, trying to take you through something to let you know who you are, what you got, where you come, stuff that you couldn't go through 10 years ago, you're able to go through it now through your experiences. And that's happened because you were overcome. God knew you were ready. What we have a problem is the devil want to throw this Bible at us. The Lord said, no, they can't handle the Bible. He said, well, let me throw this little piece of paper at them. They said, nope, they can't have the piece of paper. They can't handle this little piece of paper because it'll kill them. So he puts on it and he says, well, I'll let you cut it in half and you can put that on them because I know what they can handle. They're ready for this little piece of paper. So he brags on us. And so what we get mad about, we cry over the little piece of paper. Oh, why you let that happen? Why this happen? Oh, Lord Jesus. What? But the devil really wanted to throw this book at you. Yes. So I said, you can't handle, he can, they can't handle the book. Lord, they can only handle, he says, they can only handle this with paper. I said, allow you, Satan, to just put the paper on them. But instead of praising God for the little piece of paper, <laughs> we're complaining, say, Lord, why you put the piece of paper? But you didn't know that the devil wanted to throw the book at you. So we got to have praise them in the good times and the bad times and know that all things, what part of all don't we understand? It says all things are working together for our good. So the bad stuff that's happening to us, 
even this crazy old job I'm on, is working for my good. <laughs> so in the end, it's supposed to make us as pure as gold. It's the end. You know, we have to understand God is with us. He is allowing it to happen. He's going to bring us to it. He's going to bring us through it. So we just got to bear it. And we got enough word in us to overcome the enemy. Sometimes it's not easy, especially when you lose your child. It's not easy when you use your only child and, and, and you don't have any more children. It's not easy. But God knew you could handle it. He said, I, I, he may have taken them because he loved them more. But, but, but we have to understand that God is a just God in whatever he does. If he allowed it, and he knows you're hurting. He knows you're suffering. If you're going through a divorce, he knows you're going through that. If you're in pain from an illness, he knows that. But he said, I never put more on you than what you can bear. But we as saints of God have to encourage one another when we see people going through. Because we're all, all just a thought away from checking out of here. Sometimes the stress and the pressure can be too much. And you see a lot of people are jumping off of buildings. Mm -hmm. Children are taking a bunch of pills. There's so much stress and pressure in this world today that people are giving up. But we as saints of God have to keep each other up. Just because somebody's quiet one day and they ain't speaking or saying, you know, I can't handle that today, please. Because they're letting you know, hey, that one little piece of paper, you, you, you try to go more than what the God's trying to put on me and it may kill me. So if you see them and pray for them, I mean, I, I know I was going through some situations that I couldn't tell nobody about, but I had somebody to do is say that one little word and I probably would have blew up like a poof. <laughs> but God had mercy. He just put me in my little corner, keep my mouth shut, don't say nothing. Because sometimes stress and things can kill you. And it, 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 it'll come out in different ways. It comes out in you physically. Mm -hmm. So I have chest, stomach pain, headaches. Why am I, why am I going through this? Because you're going through a situation. And instead of you giving it over to God, you trying to handle it. It says, oh, what needless pain we bear. Because we didn't give it everything over to the Lord. We're still trying to fix it. We're still trying to make it better. Instead of trusting the Lord. That's what he preached Sunday. Stand still. Don't move. Don't move. Because I sure was going to jump. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, you know, see you later. I'll go work at McDonald's. <laughs> but he said, stand still. And I said, God, you don't know how hard that is. You don't know how hard that is when they talking about you, talking crazy to you. You got patients talking crazy to you. Everybody wants it now. Everybody wants, they're under stress too. That's why mm -hmm. stuff is happening. But we have to lift each other up. All right. All right. And that's what Bildad, as a friend, as a preacher, didn't do for Job. But we got to be able to step in. And it says in verse number 10, I think it is, or 20. I think we're at 20. It says, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers, till thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall clothe with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. So, you know, a lot of times um, Job was going through a lot of uh, talk. Um, you know, people were talking about him and assuming things, and uh, but saying he wasn't who he said he was, and but he was trying to. Uh, but the scripture saying God wouldn't cast away a perfect man. God wouldn't allow you as a perfect person to go through this. And we talked about that earlier about being perfect. It means balanced, mature, whole, and complete. If you were all that, you wouldn't be going through this situation. And, and God casting you away and feeling like you're, you're not perfect or you're not in the place that you should be. But, so, uh, but that was a lie. Bill Dad and his two friends they weren't friends. Those were just what you call frenemies. <laughs> there was somebody who said they were friends, but they were really enemy because the devil was using them to make Job feel worse than what he already did. We have to have compassion. And, and they were doing uh, what God tells us not to do, judge. 
they, they were judging Job. The only judge is God. And we can't step into his position because when you start acting like you're God, then you get in trouble with God. And that's what happened to Bill Dad and all his little friends. They got in trouble with God and they were in sin because they were had the right theology, but they were applying it wrongly to Job. So don't assume. Assumptions are 99% wrong because you don't have the full picture and the full information. That's why sometimes when we see, well, Bishop, why didn't you do such and such to so-and-so when you treated this one different? Because Bishop has information that we don't know. And, 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 and he's got a straight line from the Lord. So God is telling him how to operate, and how to act. So the judgment for one person may be different from another that God is implementing. But we can't say, God, you're wrong because you didn't do that to them, but you're doing it to me. But God is always just. He is never wrong because he has all information. And we're looking out of partial information. Anybody have any questions or thoughts about the lesson? Any comments? Uh, I, I want to ask a question. Um, these things that Job, I mean, that Job's friends were saying about him that were not accurate the friends were saying it however Job was not saying things to the friends about himself being righteous and all of this stuff he just did what he did so I'm just trying to figure out but the friends make the assumption and were saying other things so to me that's why you have to be careful about how you allow people to speak words and things into you that you have not said because like you're saying they don't know your situation or the circumstances and so uh how do how do we do that um and stay in the right position with the lord and also trying to be um um sisterly and, and, and brotherly, how do you react to things that you know that may be said, but you know are not so? Should you just leave it alone? Because sometimes you may make a bigger mess just trying to- mm -hmm. Justify. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Job was our example. God knew what he was gonna do, how he was gonna respond. That's why the test was put on him. I don't know if I can handle that test. <laughs> don't, don't even try it. Lord, please don't, please don't. <laughs> but, but he did. He maintained his, his uh, dignity, integrity throughout that whole situation. He could have riled back and said, you know, I ain't did that. Yeah, I'll try to, you know, I you know, try to justify who he was, but he didn't have to because God knew who he was and he knew who he was. He knows he didn't do any of that stuff. And if you know what anybody else say really don't matter, but we have a tendency to let those words affect us. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will kill you, <laughs> can kill you. That's why I said we have to be mindful. Some people are stronger than others. Some people can handle those words, but some people can't but God knows what you can handle. And he wouldn't put on you that situation if he knew you couldn't handle it. Um, so he knew what was in Job, that he wasn't gonna rile back and respond back. Because even Job, Job probably didn't know why God was allowing this, because he did, he questioned God. He didn't go to his friends and start saying, well, why, you know, he went to God. Remember he said, uh, Lord, well, you know, and, but then Lord had to straighten him out. Where were you when I made the sun and the moon and all that other stuff? So where, where were you? Who are you to question me? And sometimes we get in those places where we question God. Why you allow this to happen? I know I was going through a situation once and I was like, God, why you let the devil torment me like that in my mind? You're trying to push me back into the world because it was, it was getting to that point. But then I said, Lord, you didn't bring me this far to leave me. So I had to refocus re-get my mind back together say god if you allow this there's a reason if you're allowing this you're allowing and then i he he as time went on he revealed to me that the, the reason why he allowed it because i was disobedient in some things that he told me not to do and i did anyway 
And so because of that, I suffered some stuff, but I bet you next time, <laughs> if I go through those situations and God says, don't do it, don't do this, I'll listen. So it was to teach me and help me. So next time when God says no, because some God's going to give you an answer when you're praying for stuff. He says, yes, no, or not now. At the time I was going through the situation, he said, no. But I thought he said, not now. So I went ahead and did what I was going to do and paid the consequences. But he had to let me go through that and hear all the now sayers and all that. But at the end of the day, it taught me. So next time the devil won't get to me like that. And so even with Job, you have to get your mind focused back on the Lord. It ain't about what they're saying, what they're doing, because there's no truth to it. I know who I am. I know what, but you can go to God. And that's what Job did. He went to God, but God even straightened him out and said, who are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah did the same thing. Remember Jeremiah said, Lord, you deceived me. You tricked me. You got me out here preaching your word, telling you what he said. You know what? He got mad at God. Sometimes we can get mad at God. Mm -hmm. So I ain't going to speak in your name no more. I ain't going to preach no more. But then he tried to keep his little mouth shut. He said, no, it's just like fire shut up in my bones. And, but you know, God gave him space to say that. That's what I love about the Lord. We are his children. He knows his children. He knows he's just talking. He's upset. He's mad. But at the end of the day, he's going to be what God called him to be. He's going to do what God told him to do. And he was fussing. But sometimes it don't feel good when you're going through. You're suffering. Why? Why? Why, Lord? That's Do you crazy. also think that's why it is the um, extremely important to do the fasting and the praying and seeking God all the time so mm -hmm. that you know the voice of God and things are going to happen because they're going to happen to all of us. And like some of them are tests, some of them are because of what we do. And some of them just, some things are for other people. You don't do it for other people, not necessarily you. But, but I think what you're helping us to understand too is that relationship with the Lord, which is what Job had because he did all of these things in advance, seeking the Lord, praying to the Lord, having a relationship with the Lord. And uh, so then that helps you, strengthen you to understand that whatever's going on, it's between you and the Lord. And always just keep in knowing that he is our savior. He is our healer. He is our, he is all of that. And even we don't see him and don't feel him because I've been there where it's like, Lord, where are you? Or whatever is <laughs> going on here. But, but you know, in the past, which you may not be thinking at that particular time, but all the fasting and the praying leading up to that point when you're not feeling him. God is already protecting you, even though sometimes I know it myself is sort of like, okay, Lord, you know, did you hear me or whatever? But you just got to keep on going and just know that you can't. That's the important. Thing. You can't turn back. It doesn't matter how bad it is or whatever. You stick with God, like Bishop Mary would always say to somebody who's trying to return to the church and whatever, and maybe thinking some people so well. His main thing was. Take your chances with the Lord. Just take your chances with the Lord. And if you stick with him, he's going to work it out some kind of way. Yes. Because it says all things work together. That's the one of scripture when I'm really going through is oh, it's working for my good. Some way it's working for my good. May not feel good right now, but it's working for my good. And the thing, too, she said that was interesting, praying and fasting. You start praying and fasting when you're really going through. But if you already prayed up and fasted up. So when the devil starts talking to you with them crazy thoughts, he don't. It's just like if I turn this off. Y'all know my voice versus Sister Dr. Crook, Sister, Sister uh, Fitzgerald's or Tara's voice. You know my voice because you have a relationship with me. But same thing with God. When you have a relationship with the Lord, you know his voice from all the other things that are talking. When you're going through your toughest trials, there's a lot of stuff talking. You talking, self flesh is talking. The devil's talking, whispering in your ear, God don't love you. He's putting you through this. You're in sin. You're messed up because you messed up somewhere. That It could have been in Job's head. But like you said, he was always praying. He was always uh, making supplication for his children. It didn't just start when he was going through. So that's why when those friends came to him with that mess, trying to put that trash in your spirit, it didn't affect him. 
because he was already prayed up. He knew what the voice of the Lord. So when God started telling him, who are you? He mm-hmm. knew it was the Lord. And, and he, he, he quieted down. Even his wife turned again and said, you, you know, was it his, was his, his wife? It was his wife. said, curse God and die. And that even when your wife, the closest one to you, started talking crazy, he, he knew that that, that, ain't, that ain't of God. That is the devil. Because I'm waiting for the Lord to talk to me. And when you have that relationship, everything is going to be talking to you. That's why people commit suicide. The devil starts saying, you know what? You might just end your life. That's why people are saying, you know, I might just quit my job like I was going to walk out. But but I knew it was God talking at the preacher through the preacher. Because I said, oh, Bishop, he's talking straight to me. I'm like, I have to look around and be pointing to me. <laughs> but it was like he was talking straight to me because I came with that on my heart. Because I was really, 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 I, I was in, in, the, in stressing out over stuff. And I was like, I can't go back. I can't go back to work Monday. But he said, don't leave your job. Don't leave your job. <laughs> so I didn't leave my job I'm still there and, but see God's working it out because you know the voice of God versus everybody else's voice and you can tune that mess out anybody else I think all that comes because of relationships mm-hmm. um, Job is not like he was made upright or that he was made perfect or in that way but he had to choose to have that relationship with the Lord to build that type of character in him. And I think this is a great lesson as well as talking about how you build that character, build that faith and that trust in God, getting up in the morning, praying and putting God first, even for your children. So he built that relationship where he was known to have that type of character. And so God could trust him in this Mm -hmm. test. And so I think it's a lesson also to us that we, we must uh, continue to build our relationship with the Lord, get closer to him, that he can trust us in certain things while our tests and trials may come our way. And we're wondering why, why, how, how much more can we bear, Lord? And he'll let you know, we, you know, we can bear a little bit more. You know, we're going to let you kind of go a little way and not have any hard tests and trials. But then the next one that comes, you'll be able to stand it because you know I'm with you. I was with you through this one. So I'll definitely be with you through the next one. But I think it all really came with Job because of his relationship. God could brag on him because he Mm -hmm. knew him and he could trust him. Mm -hmm. Can God trust you? Can he trust you in your test? Can he trust that you ain't going to leave the church? That you ain't going to give up? That you ain't going to walk away no matter how bad it is? That's why it says get up. Put on the whole armor. You got to get up every day. Put on that whole armor of God. The breastplate of righteousness. And so that you can fight them fiery darts when they come at you. Because they're going to come at you. And put on the helmet of salvation. Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. You got to know the word. The word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's where these scriptures come into. It's not just to read and quote. It's to apply it to your life. And you got to have a scripture in your life. You know, my favorite is when I'm really feeling down, y'all know my scripture. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And let the king of glory come in. In case I forgot, who is the king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. So lift up your heads because he's going to fight my battle. I may want to fight him sometime and let go, <laughs> you know, and fight my own battle. Then I'll be in trouble with God. But God said, lift up. I am strong and mighty in battle. So you got to give it over to me. I got your back. I'm going to take care of it. You're going through the fire. We're going to feel a little heat because I'm pressing out that mess out of you. So, and I, I'm putting the heat on it because when you put that steam on it, what happens? That, that stuff gets flat. Sometimes we're going through the steam right now. <laughs> Some of us are going through the fire, getting that heat. And you ever get a burn, a little steam burn, that thing hurts. So that's what he's doing. Some things in our lives are going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But he said it's going to heal. But when it heals, it's going to be stronger in that area than it ever was. You break a bone where the break is, it's going to be stronger in that point. If God's broken you, it's going to be stronger in the place that he broke. Okay. See, some things the devil can't even mess with me in, but there's some things I'm real weak in, and God's trying to teach me. You're stronger than you think you are. You can handle it. You can handle it. Anybody else have any comments? Anything? 
need us to pray for? Got about four minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, sis. Oh yeah. Oh, this is um something I want to comment on the assumption or assume mindset. Um, on my job, one of my classroom rules is to assume the best. And I try I try to assume the best the first and maybe second, you know, and then at the end I may have to think negative. And so sometimes when kids um like for some reason when kids are they assume that someone is staring at them and I tell them, you know, they probably just looking past you. It looks like they're looking at you. And, you know, I tell them, you know, remove, I mean, take your eyeballs and move them in another direction to the other person that's offending the other person. And another example of being positive as far as assumption, I was thinking about years ago when um, Michael Jordan's dad uh, died and they asked him, what did you think when he first came up missing? Um, he said, well, I got assurance from my mother. And also it's not unusual for my dad to go off for a couple of days. He said, well, I'm not going to think, you know, the worst thing, first of all. And that just stuck with me as far as, you know, assumption. So I just, I was just trying to assume the best. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's real good because we always want to assume the positive, not always go to the negative side because we're going to see some stuff that don't look right, don't be right. But we're not God. We don't know what the situation is. If it may not look right, just pray. Pray God will fix it. He'll work it out. Uh, you know, if it don't look right, we can't judge what a person's doing because we don't know what they're doing. We don't know why they're doing what's what's happening. And and so we can't assume. We we'll always want to assume the worst instead of accentuating the positive. And even like you said, sometimes you'd be walking by and you say, oh, they look like they, they don't want to talk to me today. And just assuming that they, you don't know, that person may be going through something else. Their mind is totally somewhere else. They ain't even thinking about you. But we get to that place where we assume they don't like me or they didn't speak to me today or you never know. But that's why the Lord is saying through this lesson, don't assume because 99% of the time you're wrong. You don't mm -hmm. know. What you're not all knowing. You don't know what's happening. So you can't assume and, and sometimes you say, oh, I don't, that girl don't like me. You don't, you, you may never talk to that person. <laughs> and then when you do really talk to them, you're like, man, they ain't who I thought they were. They just as sweet. <laughs> yeah, we always got to assume the positive and God will work out for us. Sis, you got another, anybody else? That's a good one. Assume the positive, especially kids. It ain't just kids, it's grown folks. <laughs> they looking at me, <laughs> but it may not be looking at you. They looking at somewhere else. They probably just dazing out in space, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else have a comment? Well, I thank y'all for tuning in. I hope you got something out of the lesson tonight. And uh, we just want to continue to pray for uh, the Dunlap family um, and Sister KK. I know she, everything's quieting down now. We do still need to reach out and just say, you know, I'm thinking about it. that was her, her only child and let her know we're thinking about her and, you know, appreciate and love her, you know, because sometimes the enemy will mess with you, you know, after everything is over with. I want to remember all those that are sick and shut in. Uh, Mother Hicks, good to see you on the line. Sister Fitzgerald, good to see you on the line. And uh, there's a couple other people. I see some numbers, but we're glad you're here tonight. We want you to come back. Um, you know, even as the church is transitioning, reach out to those we haven't seen in a while. Uh, may not know what's going on with them. We don't want to assume that they've left the church. <laughs> we just want to assume they may be going through situations. And, or Dr. Crook, you have an announcement. Right, and I want to just ask you all to pray for uh, my cousin, I've been to a funeral uh, today, and Sister um, Terry and Victor Williams, they've come to the church for years, and Sister Terry uh, son lost her son uh, within, within this year, and then her uh, two aunts passed away, and then her sister passed away, and that's whose funeral we were at uh, today. So just keep that family in prayer and just uh, reach out to them and uh, give them a call. They were coming really, really consistently uh, before the pandemic. And so, but just really keep 
the, the family, the Beatty family, because it's a whole lot of Beatty's and with different last names, Cooks, Leaves, or whatever. But uh, let's keep that family uh, in prayer. When we were little children, we came out of a poor family and we were about to get set out. We moved in, her mother had her children, so we moved in with, with them and they let us stay with them, which we always mm -hmm. moved around different places. So just keep uh, our whole baby family in and we have been telling them, try your opportunity I have is one of them and I always constantly say, well, if your church is not open yet, because I'm not trying to make them think run away from wherever you are, not this group, but the, other, not the, the Williams, but just, uh, we're still out on the line. You don't have to come in. We have uh, some, we're going in. So just kind of getting the word out there to not just uh, to all of our relatives, all of our friends, uh, and just keeping them in our prayer as we have moved to this new location. And that's my main thing. God has put us in this new location for and Bishop Mary uh, has constantly the ministry. Well, what does that mean? What does the ministry mean? You know, the ministry mean we have to go out beyond just us, the saints, we have to pray for one another. But our main function and role, because as you're saying, time is getting short, wars, pandemics, everything going on. So we don't have a whole lot of time left to get people in to hear the gospel. And one thing about it is the, even the Sunday school classes, you know, just got to put it out there, flood it out there, and keep on saying it, and give them the tools of other others what they may need to come and join us because it may just not be those on the line, but we have so many unsaved friends, so many unsaved co-workers, so many unsaved organizations that we work with. And sometimes, like you say, maybe a word just may keep them from doing some things that may cause uh, some kind of eternal uh, destination for them. Um, if we just get the word out there, to get them to come. And sometimes people are just too ashamed to come because they think we, just like with this lesson, we as church people may be judging them and whatever. So we have a whole lot that we gotta work through and get through as we go out and administer uh, to everybody. And then that's gonna help us also because I'm learning more. If I, I take my time off of me, I don't have time, I, mean, I have other time to Get out there and focus on others because we got to take care of ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Take care of ourselves is going to be no good to anybody. But the more you get out there and the more we do ministries and reaching out, it's not only going to help them, but it's also going to strengthen our relationship in the Lord. Amen. And we also want to remember Sister Cartwright. Any other prayer requests? And her mother. Anybody else have any special prayer requests? If not, let every heart pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, Lord, we come before you, oh God, thanking you, oh God, for this day, for this is the day, oh God, that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad yes. in it, oh God. Lord, we pray for every prayer request that have gone yes. up before you, oh God, for the Beatty family, for the Sister KK, oh God, for Sister, Sister Cartwright's mother, oh God, we ask that you move right now. We pray for our seniors, oh God, those that yes. are in the yes. house, oh God, that aren't able to come out, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you keep their minds and their spirits, oh God. Lord, we yes. bond the spirit of depression, oh God, that yes. they overcome them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we pray a special prayer, oh God, for those that are out on the street tonight, oh God. Yes that don't know you, that don't have a place to go, oh God. We pray that you, hallelujah, open doors, oh God, make yes, ways yes. out of no ways, oh God. We pray for this Sunday school class, oh God, yes, the Jesus. word that we hide in our heart, yes, that we may yes. not sin against you, oh God. We pray, oh God, that the word, hallelujah, will just yes, be in Jesus. our spirit, oh God, that we may not assume things that are not of you, oh God. Yes, but we're yes. just asking that you just have your way, oh God. But we pray a special prayer for our pastor, oh God, during this time, oh God, strengthen him, oh God, as this transition transition, oh God. You know, renew his body, oh God. Renew yes, his strength, yes. oh God. Renew his mind, oh God. And we come back and give you the glory, honor, and the yes, praise. Yes. You are worthy in yes, the name yes. of Jesus. Now have your way for the rest of the week, oh God. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Excellent job. Amen. Have a blessed night. Yes, Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. Don't oh, forget to stay really focused right. ministry on this weekend. Oh, yes. I think they're having the stay focused ministry program. It's Evangelist Morrison or Dr. Cook. Do you have the information on that? It's in the uh, DCT newsletter. Yeah. 
It is at 10 o'clock on uh, this Saturday and the, um, I can put, I have to go out there. Tara, can you get to it and we can put it in the chat? I believe that there is from 10 to two and they got some of the GCT speakers. They got some great speakers, dancers, Sister Busher. Uh, do you know any other? It's, uh, we're not. <laughs> and it's, okay. the, it's in the newsletter. Okay. Uh, and for those that come to the, this is my story, it's that same login. Oh, it's okay. the same login as, as the This Is My Story, uh, where the uh, password is testify. But it is in a newsletter. I did send it out to uh, the missionaries and ministers, as well as I think the Sunday school um, um, email list as well. So they mm -hmm. should have it and should have a flyer about it as well. Uh, and it's Saturday from 10 to 12 on Zoom. Amen. Um, Mm -hmm. And I put the uh, the ID in the chat, and they're going to put in the, put the, in the uh, testify is the. Uh, okay, thank you. Amen, amen. So the the Stay Focused Ministry program will be this Saturday. Amen. Evangelist right. uh, Vanessa Dunlap is the host. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other announcements? If not, y'all be blessed. You too. Thank you. Love you. Love you Great too. lesson. Great lesson. Thank you. It was Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Yes. Yes.